What's up my Whovian homies? I am the Doctor Who Kid and today I am reviewing Legend of the Sea Devils. <laughs> So, this Easter special sees the Doctor, Yaz and Dan head to 19th century Asia, encounter a pirate queen, as well as some sea devils, and work to find the treasure and figure out what the sea devils are planning to do with said treasure, all the while saving the world and all that jazz. Really, it has nothing to do with Easter, it's just meant to be a little fun romp. You know, a little palate cleanser before the big centenary finale. And in that purpose, it definitely succeeds. We got pirates, aliens, although the earthlings really, Dan in a panto pirate costume, phasmid stuff. Yeah, really, this episode has everything. Now, I have never actually seen any of the Sea Devils' prior appearances in Classic Who, so all I have to go on is my knowledge of the Silurians and this episode. And to that I say, yeah, I, I really like how they were handled here. They managed to give the bare minimum of exposition as to what these things actually are, in a way that doesn't alienate people who've never seen Classic Who, like myself in this instance. But they also don't make it seem like there's any contradictions to that classic stuff. There's a moment at one point when the Doctor confronts the lead sea devil and is like, Hey, I've met you lot before and you all seem like real honourable stuff. What are you lot then? The bad eggs of the sea devils or something like that? And yeah, I like that little touch. A way to honour the past without getting bogged down in it. You know, real fun stuff. The character work in this is also pretty decent. The ones who aren't our main trio don't get a lot of depth to them beyond the basics, except possibly the main historical figure, the Pirate Queen, who of course has, is a pirate but is shown to have her own sympathetic and noble qualities to her. It made her a nice presence to have around, even if unlike other historical episodes we've had in this era we don't really get much told about who she is beyond the fact that she's a pirate lady. And going back to the Sea Devils, something I also quite liked is the effects themselves. They're basically fully practical with some CGI enhancements to make them like blink and talk and stuff. And it ends up working really really nicely. You know, just great costume work overall. In terms of special effects stuff I feel didn't hold up quite as well. It did seem a bit green screeny at points. Though then again, we have been living in a pandemic. Some of stuff like that seems pretty understandable in that light. Now, character work for the main trio is pretty nice as well. We don't get much with Dan as he ends up getting split up from the others again. Though this time we still get some good material with him because he, he ends up tagging along with the Pirate Queen and this kid whose father was killed at the start of the episode because of the Pirate Queen releasing the Sea Devil. So we get a nice rapport between them that I feel works quite nicely. And as for the Doctor and Yaz, well, we got Phasmin stuff in this episode, and I actually really like how they handled it. We basically get two scenes in the plot itself, of where we fully get to explore everyone's feelings on this matter, which means it doesn't take up too much of the episode, and yet it still feels substantial enough, you know? Like, Let's face it, dropping a major plot point like this when we only have two episodes with these characters left is not a good idea at all. And yet the way they handled it this time gives me hope that it'll still have the proper emotional payoff once we reach the end. Honestly, the best scene in this episode is the last bit right after the adventure is done when they're just on the beach having a frank, honest conversation about their relationship and where things stand and where they could go from here, with the Doctor basically being like, you know, not wanting to take things further because she's feeling about her own mortality and just wants to preserve what they have while it's still there, because she knows that things will be coming to an end soon. And I really enjoyed that. Like, that's some great character exploration with the Doctor that I really want to see more of. Honestly, it makes me wish we were having a full series this year instead of just 
specials, and speaking of a full series and not just specials, there's also a moment during this bit where Dan phones Diane. Remember her? The lady with the long arm who he was sort of involved with, but then it didn't end well. Yeah, she pops in again for a phone call and it's suggested that Dan has been on a lot of TARDIS adventures at this point. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of adventures we could have had before we reach this point. Big Finish, I'm looking at you. If you don't explore this stuff once you're legally able to, that will be a massive wasted opportunity. So yeah, that was Legends of the Sea Devils. It was a pretty fun romp. Not much more beyond what it was, but the Fastman stuff definitely elevated it to enjoyment in my eyes especially. And I was already enjoying everything we were getting beforehand. So, that's it for today my Whovian homies. I am the Doctor Who Kid, and I will see you next time for a review of Doctor Who Redacted. Like, oh my god, can you believe we have another Jodie Whittaker story this year? Beyond just the specials? Like, I wasn't even expecting that. That was a really pleasant surprise. Hang on, I feel like I've forgotten something. Oh yeah, the next time trailer. What the hell was that?